Hey, his students, it's Mrs. Poe. Today we are reading The Sneetches by Dr. Seuss. Now, the star belly Sneetches had bellies with stars, and the plain belly Sneetches had none upon Mars. Those stars weren't so big, they really were quite small. You might think something, such a little thing, wouldn't matter at all. But because they are stars, all the star belly sneeches would brag that they're the best kind of sneech on the beaches. With their snoots in the air, they would sniff and they'd snort. We have nothing to do with the plain belly sort. And whenever they met some, they were walking about. They'd hike right out past them without even talking. When the star belly children went out to play ball, could the plain belly play in the game? Not at all. You only could play if your bellies had stars and the plain belly children had none upon bars. When the star belly sneeches had frankfurter roasts or picnics or parties or marshmallow toasts, they never invited the plain belly sneeches. They left them out cold in the dark of the beaches. They kept them away never let them come near, and that's how they treated them year after year. No, then one day, it seems, while the plain belly sneeches were moping and doping alone on the beaches, just sitting there wishing their bellies had stars, a stranger zipped up in the strangest of cars. My friends, he announced in a voice clear and keen, my name is Sylvester McMonkey McBean, and I've heard of your troubles. I've heard you're unhappy. I can fix that in my fix it up chappy. I've come here to help you. I've come to see what you need, and my prices are low, and I work with great speed, and my work is 100% guaranteed. Then, Quickly, Sylvester McMonkey McBean put together a very peculiar machine. And he said, you want stars like the star belly Sneech? Well, my friends, you can have them for $3 each. Just pay me your money and hop right aboard. So they clambered inside, then that big machine roared. And it clonked and it bonked and it jerked and it burked and it bopped about them. But then that thing really worked. When the plain belly sneeches popped out, they had stars. They actually did. They had stars upon bars. Then they yelled at the ones who had stars from the start. We're exactly like you. You can't tell us apart. We're all just the same now, you snooty old smarties. And now we can go to your Frankfurter parties. Good grief, grown the ones who had stars from the first. We're still the best sneeches, and they are the worst. And now, how in the world will we know? They all frowned. If which kind is what, or the other way round? Then up came McBean with this very sly wink, and he said, things are not quite as bad as you think. So you don't know who's who? That's perfectly true. But come with me, friends. Do you know what I'll do? I'll make you again the best sneeches on the beaches, and all it will cost you is $10 each. Wait, in the beginning it was three, and now it's 10? Hmm. Belly stars are no longer in style, said McBean. What you need is a trip in my star off machine. This wonderful contraption will take off your stars so you won't look like sneeches who have them on bars. And that handy machine, it worked precisely, removing all stars from their tummies quite nicely. Then, with their snoots in the air, they paraded about, and they opened their beaks and they let out a shout. We know who is who. Now, there isn't a doubt. The best kind of sneech is the sneeches without. Then, of course, those with stars got frightfully mad. To be wearing a star now was frightfully bad. Then, of course, old Sylvester McMonkey McBean invited them into his star-off machine. 
Then, of course, from then on, you could probably guess things got into quite a horrible mess. All the rest of the day on the wild screaming beaches, the fix it up chappy kept fixing up sneeches off again, on again, in again, out again. Through the machines, they raced round and about again. Changing their stars every minute or two, they kept paying money, they kept running through until neither the plane nor the star bellies knew whether this one was that one or that one was this one or which one was what one or what one was who. Then, when every last cent of their money was spent, the fix-it-up chappy packed up and he went and he laughed as he drove in his car up the beach. They'll never learn. No, you can't teach a sneech. But McBean was quite wrong. I'm happy to say that the Sneetches got really quite smart on that day. That day they decided that Sneetches are Sneetches and no kind of Sneetch is the best on the beaches. That day all the Sneetches forgot about stars and whether they had one or not upon bars. Look, even the fish down here is happy.